Good evening. Today is day four of our embroidery adventure and we are going to learn the stem stitch. So I still have not received my cruel tapestry yarn yet, so or floss. So I'm using cotton again and I'm using all six strands of the cotton. So I'm going to um, thread your needle, put your knot on the end, and then uh, of course put your hoop on your project, on your sampler. Yesterday was the chain stitch. It was um, quite a challenge. I'm hoping today's is going to go quicker and better because I had a really rough time with this chain stitch. I don't know why I had such a hard time with it, but today will be a better day. All right. Sampler is in the hoop. Now the way that the stem stitch works, according to the book, is okay it's an excellent outline stitch stem stitch may also be used as a solid filming filling in this case like the chain stitch the lines should all be worked in the same direction for smoothness smoothness the thread may be held either to the right or the left of the needle but once the line or block of stitches is begun it should always be held to the same side when working on outlining, hold the thread away from the shape and towards the outside of the curves. This will make the outline roll outward instead of falling inward and become spiky. When working stems to branches, work the main stem right through first from top to bottom, then starting at the tip of the subsidiary stems, work them down to join the main stem, continuing the line alongside for several stitches to make a smooth join. Shorten the stitches slightly when working curves. Okay, so the book has pictures and the look we're looking for at the end is that. So it kind of looks like a rolled piece of yarn. So it says to go in, come up from the bottom and I'm gonna do my uh, away stitch. I'm going to work on this line here and I did redraw this with a marker so you can see it better my lines um, so I'm going to do this line here so of course I put my my away stitch way away from it to give myself plenty of slack for whenever I'm finished with my line and come in through the top of your line that and pull it all the way through. Now once you have it through you're going to hold your thread kind of like the chain stitch remember we held the thread off to the side and come down one full stitch down like that. So whenever you come and whenever you pull your thread through you want to hold your thread off to the side. And it doesn't matter if you hold it on the left side or the right side, it doesn't matter as long as all of your stitches are going the same direction. I'm going to hold it to the left. Then you take your needle and you push right in between, in the, in the middle, between the two, uh, between the two pieces of thread coming through. So it's right there in the middle. Then whenever you pull it through, it's going to, somewhat like the chain stitch, it's going to make a design kind of like that to where it's kind of rolled. Then on your next stitch, you're going to do the same thing. Go in one stitch down and pull and now you're going to come up right where the last stitch ended right there ok 
Okay, see how it's kind of giving it a rolled look? And I apologize for using white, but my thread hasn't come in yet, and it'll be darker colors. And I'm at, this is the last color I have of the cotton. All right, so again, pull, whoops, hold your thread off to the side, and then push your needle in at the bottom of the last stitch right there. And the more you go, the like the further your line gets, the more it gets that that uh, rolled appearance. And on the back, notice you're just getting like a straight stitch. This is all it looks like. But they're all connected because of where you're coming back and connecting on the front. Okay. So I'll do a couple more. and show you what it looks like as the line gets longer. I like this stitch because it's easier than that chain stitch from yesterday. Yesterday I really, I had to work at it for a very long time. And what did I do? One, two, three. I, I did six lines of a chain stitch, and I still don't feel real comfortable with it. But with this one, I mean, it seems to be super easy. I don't know why it's not listed first in the book. Because it seems to be the easier one, and in my opinion, I think it's prettier than that chain stitch. So once I get ready to do my quilt, I may just use this stem stitch all over it instead of doing all these other fancy ones. All right, so you can see as my line gets longer, it's really got kind of a braided look and if you look at the angle of each stitch, it's kind of diagonal, like that. And it looks like a rolled rope. It looks good. If you're having trouble with it, then um, you, of course you'll want to practice on more lines, like I did yesterday with the chain stitch. <clears throat> that way you're comfortable at least at least going through the motions and who knows maybe from yesterday all the frustration and all the practice maybe that's what's making this one easier for me I don't know I'm starting to feel like those other ladies that are on YouTube that look like professionals after doing this, I'm like, wow, maybe I really can do this. I'm just gonna stick with it. Cause I really want, really wanna make that quilt. I don't know how to quilt either, but I figure I'll just do the squares and I'll put little designs on them. Maybe birds and bunnies and butterflies. And I don't know what else. Maybe cats. I like cats. Maybe a couple puppies. Maybe baby deer. I don't know. Cute stuff. Hearts, flowers. I got all kinds of things that I want to put on the bed. On this bedspread or quilt and I figure by the time I'm done with this sampler maybe I'll be ready to do a do those squares 
So what I'm doing is I'm going to take a bedspread where the um, oh the stuffing gets a little bit you know from being washed it gets kind of chunky on the ends so it's not it's kind of a worthless blanket at this point but I really like the blanket I mean I really like that fabric and everything so I'm kind of like you know what I'm gonna take the stuffing out and make a quilt out of okay I'm at the end so notice I've come out in between two stitches so to finish it off I'm just gonna push the needle down at the bottom of the last stitch this one is actually super fast and it looks really neat on the back I mean it really looks nice I am really liking this stem stitch so to finish it off I think I have this more figured out so I'm gonna try to hold this while I do it okay so I think you're supposed to do it like this like put the needle through the last stitch and then wrap the thread I don't know if I can do this well maybe if I stick this in my mouth but you're gonna wrap the thread around so I'm not gonna talk because I might have the camera in my mouth hang on oh it won't fit all right I'll just try to try to do it while I hold it all right so I wrap that around twice on the end of the thread Ouch. and then pull it and it kind of makes a knot still looks kind of bulky but then I'm gonna do it again in the next stitch up so they're not too close go in the opposite direction and I'm doing it on the next stitch so maybe they won't uh, I think I'll go up two stitches I'm going to go up to this one and then do the same thing with wrapping the thread around the end of your needle before you pull it all the way through. So one, come on, it's hard to do for one left handed and another one handed. There's the second time wrapping it around and now I will pull the needle and it'll make another knot and now so I've got a knot here and a knot here and then remember we're supposed to weave and I really hope you can see this weave your needle through your stitches like that I'll just do what I can and cuz I'm doing it one-handed and usually I've got two hands and I'll continue to weave it for a while, you know, I try to get as much of it in here as possible. See, I'm just weaving it kind of through the stitches. I think you get the point. I mean, I'm just pulling the thread through. So it's like part of the, becomes part of the back, but it hides this piece of thread and you don't end up with a big old nut. There's my cat. Don't end up with a big old nut on the back. Because remember in embroidery day one, we learned that they don't want a big nut. Okay, and then I'm gonna cut off the little tail. 
And now I'll do the same thing with this one, but I'll come this way. So hold on. Okay, so now I've got the other end. And first I will go through here. And bring it through. And then back out. course flip it over real quick make sure I didn't screw up the front like I did the right there and then I'll do the same thing where I take the needle and I wrap it around I, wish I, could. I need a freaking helmet to hold my camera My cat can't hold it for me. Right. He's not that smart. He's smart, but he's not that smart. Well, I mean, I think you got it anyway because I've already done it on this side. Okay, so assuming that you're caught up and that you did the same thing, um, You've got the two knots down here going this way and this way, and then I'm pushing the needle through all of this thread back here, all of your stitches, and just pulling it so that it straightens out. And then I cut off the tail like that. And I think it looks really good. I mean, for the, the back, it's not like it's got major knots. It's all pretty consistent back here with this stitch. And then the front, I think, looks really awesome because it looks kind of... See how much it's raised off of the fabric? It's, like, really good. So I consider this one today a major success. So what I'll do on my heart is I'm gonna match it over here if I have enough white thread left. And I'm still waiting for my other thread to come in. Obviously the, the wool uh, yarn did not work. And so I won't be trying that again. Um, and if I run out of white, then I'll just have to, I don't know, I'll just have to wait until I get my other stuff. Because I don't think I have enough. Uh, no, I have pure white right here. This is the off-white, so. Um, I've definitely got enough to do this side, and then tomorrow I will do, let's see, a split stitch. It'll look like that. Ooh, that looks nice, too. All right. So, have a good night or day, and I will see you tomorrow. Bye. Okay, so I put the other line in on the opposite side, but whenever I went to tie the knots, I thought, well, you know, this little ring is getting in the way. So I'm gonna take the ring off before I tie the knots. So what it did whenever I did that, I don't know if you can really tell, but see how this is all bunched up where this one looks a lot straighter. Um, so don't take your ring off whenever you are gonna tie it off as like a way to, you know, put your needle through with not, without having this in the way because the result is not good. So another lesson learned and uh, that's it for tonight. So y'all have a good night.